harmonize the colors of the fly with the water. Do you want the darker part of Gorba or do you want to fish with a bit of sun? Do you want to fish uh, a banana fly? These two flies been giving me so many fish and uh, last couple of years I've been fishing what I call the bastard. It's a, like a crossbreed between a banana and a patagorba. So, this will be my choice now. Well, welcome to one uh, another one of our uh, Pattern of the Month films. Um, losing uh, count here but I think it's number 42 and today I'm gonna do actually do a fly that I think is a beautiful fly um, I like when colors harmonate and uh, they go into each other and I think this little version uh, of two of my um, favorite flies uh, actually do that in a perfect way favorite flies i yeah all of you most of you heard of the patagorba and and know it's one of my favorite flies and know it's been in my boxes for what 30 years now or so um and um many of you know that i also fish my nasty banana which is a uh, a kind of dull uh, yellowish copper colored fly and the last couple of years I know I talked about it in films that I've been fishing a paragorba with the banana body and I've been fishing bananas with the paragorba body and the good thing is when you fish BTTs and TTTs is that you can variate this any way you want uh, but I also fish plastic and I fish what we would say maybe regular flies tied where the body and the wings and the hackles everything is on tied on the tube and I've been fishing different kinds of crossovers so many times now that uh, we decided to put this up as our own pattern and it turned out to be that I I, I use it so much so it actually and caught a few fish or many fish on them and so it deserves to be a uh, own pattern and um, you know many flies on the that we fish modern flies are variations uh, of the old classics this is not this is a variation on two of the modern flies and um, I call it the bastard because it is a bastard. It's a crossover because between the patagorba and the, and the banana kind of uh, fly that I like. So beautiful, quite complex fly to tie. So I'm going to stop talking and start tying or this will be our longest film. Okay, so I'm going to use uh, uh, the same, I normally don't do that, but I'm going to use the same color of the excess and um, medium. It's going to be uh, gold colored. And uh, as a lot of you know, I uh, try to do the medium tubing to be about or, or maximum half of the length of the uh, of the finished fly so uh, doing it three a uh, little more than three centimeter um, medium it means this fly can end up being round from six to ten and uh, I, I fish a lot of eight eight to ten centimeter flies so I'll put this on uh, our needle um, and um, I do it so I'm sure that the extra small goes quite far into the medium. Uh, I cut it at an angle and I use the thread to secure the, uh, the tubing, put them together. Uh, I'm using a 12-0. I 
I only tie with 12 -0. actually our 12 uh, our own 12 -0 thread now on our own bobbin which is small uh, because I want to have it in my hand being able to control and steer with my fingers like this I showed you I think in the last film okay so I start this uh, same way I do with a lot of them uh, a lot of flies I start with uh, Mirage Mirage over gold uh, is being very much gold and I back down uh, leaving about six mil to be able to put the hook in uh, without um, be sure I put it on uh, the hook in without uh, interfering with the mirage on this one uh, we call them classics because the hackles are divided I'm gonna put on a tail and um, on the Patagorba there's an orange one on the uh, on the banana there is a, a, a yellow one and uh, I'm gonna do a gold one and uh, we can use either fiber is a good material but I can also use like I've done in quite a few flies uh, uh, I use um, another synthetics and uh, those of you following us know we're experimenting on something we call tail fiber hopefully we will have it out to you shortly uh, this is a nice material that actually tapers down very very good without cutting and you can see how this gets a very a long and tapered tip and that's what i like and I put this on, make sure I get it down a little bit on the sides before I tie it in. Look where I have my thread, so I don't have thread seen. This I can cut, but I don't do that and normally because it's better to have it under the braid. Uh, and I'm going to use two different braids. Messier already. Ludwig came before this film and said, didn't you clean your desk? So yeah, sure I did, but this is how it is. Use a lot of materials and then they are all over the place. Okay, two different hollow braids. I use my nasty rusty and I use the gold one and I'm gonna use the gold one as a ribbon. So I start by tying in the gold one. I take, then take the uh, nasty rusty and tie, tie that in at the same time and um, you know I can be careful with thread uh, but here it's not that necessary because it's such a big fly okay so I start by tying this down make sure now that I will get my braid covering all of the thread the braid is super strong it's one of our strongest materials and I can overlap tapering it to create a good second half or rear half of the body like this cut it off and uh, I want my fly to grow maybe my tail is a little uh, too much down there it's twisted a little always good to keep an eye on the fly when you tie otherwise your box is going to end up with ugly flies that you don't want to fish okay I want my body to grow so what I do is I start with the thinnest material I go to another one is a bit thicker and then I go on to uh, dubbing and normally I put only one color of dubbing on today I'm going to use two. I'm going to use what I do on the banana, which is our nasty rusty. It's, it's a mix with a bit of copper and a bit of orange and a bit of gold. It uh, turns into a really nice, nasty 
rusty color and uh, it's one of the colors I use in a lot of flies actually. Put a little bit on at the time and tie it in and since I'm gonna have this body in two, I mean this part of the body in two, I will not go too much in front before I change over to the black. Patagorb has got the black front body with an orange shackle. We're doing it almost like that. At least taking the black from the Patagorba and uh, using glitch, which is a very easy material to dab on and also long enough to brush out. And uh, it's good I tie a few of those. Bags are packed, I'm on my way for uh, this season's last little Norwegian adventure. Going down to the south of Norway tomorrow. You see how I build this up? Make sure I don't go too much front. I need to have about four millimeters to put most of the wing on. Uh, so I get the wing uh, onto the, to the medium tubing and not onto the extra small. Uh, I then do a body hackle, have a, um, yellow like a golden yellow this time um, two feathers one is enough pick the best one uh, I like the badger where you have the the darker center of the feather and I tie it in tie it in on the medium now and you can see I don't use that much thread three to six turns normally and I do this and uh, I said it a million times but it, if you just back down your hackle you're gonna get too little material here we want to build this rope form so we want more material in the front meaning I always start with one here and then I pull this down into the dubbing try to make it as even as possible and it's a little short but I prefer to do this with my fingers uh, I can do a hackle plier too but I normally do this with my fingers take the other braid same material and it's one of the big advantages with our uh, SSS braid is that it's thin enough to twist down to any size you want and I cross over every turn of uh, my body hackle feather before I tie it in close take this little tip away here we go be careful don't want to cut off all the hackle fibers and instead of cutting this, I can go front with one or two turns of thread, just a little bit, and double back. If I do that, it can't slip. You want to tie a good fly, a good fishing fly, but you all, oh, the worst thing that can happen, I think, is that you catch a fish and your fly is ruined. Okay. So here we have the color mix and it, you know, it looks okay. But the good thing with dubbing is that all dubbing actually should be brushed. And I brushed this with our own little mean tool here. Uh, and I brush it down, have all these fibers mix with the hackle and get the bulkier but also much more translucent part of the fly okay so far it looks um, a little bit like a darker kind of banana fly 
now I'm gonna pick on the pick up on the on the yellow from the banana and I'm gonna take uh, our angel hair HD and I'm running out on my little little mix I have where I have them put up here so I have to take a new pack and uh, look at this and you know we call these hot and uh, magma yellow and the hot goes with that we have some really strong fluorescent fibers in there like all our our SSS this is a mix and uh, it's not only a mix of colors, it's a mix of different fibers. Tie it in, spread it, so I'm sure I get uh, fibers on half the diameter of the tubing and back down the thread. Want this tapered, I want uh, different uh, fibers to be different length. I don't cut it like this, they will come together. I take the scissor and I pull and cut and I have to do it maybe two or three times I have a long one here so I get uneven length of those and looking in front I can see I have uh, angel hair HDs sticking out on the sides and also on the top just like I want it Okay, time for the first wing and I'm going to use something that will, I think I saw it right here. Here we go. I'm going to use a dirty yellow kind of uh, color of this hair and you can use any hair as long as it's soft, soft and curly. The curliness of the hair makes it uh, more translucent which i think is uh, important i tie it in tie i cut it off make sure i use my brush to brush through this look at i have some very long ones here i can take those away and since this is a little long i can move my fingers up pull out a few and uh, create a nice little shape on the wing before I tie it in. Untangle with a brush and it will be good, I hope. And the thing with the wing is the first wing it can't be too long. I try to tie it about as long as the tail. If I do that I will secure that I get a good tapering. Tie it in widely like that and cut and since I have hair on both sides I need to be able to cut this a little bit at a time. I have a little trick also when I uh, I take this and I spin it a little before I cut it it's easier but it's also, you have to be careful so you don't pull it up on the top. You're going to have a, a fly with a wing sitting right on top and not wide like this. Okay, good. So we go on next color. I'm going to use a couple of strands of our angel hair. Uh, and I use our hot orange in flames and hot again, meaning it's got fluorescent fibers inside and I tie in a few double back make sure I tie in materials on top of each other like this and not to the front if I keep on going to the front it's going to be a lot of thread on a long piece of the tube that's going to be bare and you do the fly and you turn it around and you will see the thread uh, seen there and this thread might break or someone break it for you luckily a big fish it doesn't matter but you don't want to have the first little smoke break it okay here we go I can trim these uh, angel hair strands afterwards but here we go first first wing and uh, 
it's time to take out next little bunch of hair and Patagorva the Patagorva uh, brown color tricky color to dye actually uh, the best way is to dye two uh, baths of dye one fiery brown and one being orange then you get this really nice shine to it I think okay looking here taking um, part of wing that's gonna be uh, well if that is it's gonna be about the same amount as I put on yellow I'm gonna do three colors but I will have very little black on the top and um, brush it through the same way look at the tapering I can taper this a little bit more I move my fingers up and I pull out a few strands look so I get a very, very few long strands there and tie it in and there's a thing happening with this orange or brown color when you put it onto the yellow that I like it gets even more color to it uh, being quite dull now it gets gets even more shine and I look at the length of this moving it back feeling so I have a quite long taper and the taper is what will make this swim make sure it's wide or I pull it down a bit can I have a few strands of yellow uh, below the brown it doesn't matter it can only be good and I cut again the trick I showed before is that I take this and I twist it a little bit before I take the scissors and put them in and uh, here we go now there's one thing to uh, be decided when you do the classic with the half turbo and that is in what order you're going to put in wings and hackles and to have this uh, being taking very little space in the front I put in almost all of the wing all the hackles and I end up with the last little piece of of wing like that so from here now I'm going to start hackling this fly but to secure this I can take a little bit of glue use support and I put a little glue on here turning this from the weakest to the strongest part of the fly okay so normally uh, I do uh, different kind of, of cock hackles and, and sometimes ostrich and but I'm now I'm going to do a mix and I think this is one of the keys on this fly and I'm taking a ostrich body feather that is this dirty orange a uh, dirty yellow color and to tie in a few strands of this you can see this is a very good feather by the way um, you find uh, these feathers in our feather packs but uh, to make this even what I do is I look at it and see where I have uh, the best part and I would say this is just equally good so I can strip off either one of the sides here and uh, which way do I want to do it doesn't really matter but I take this and I strip these off you can save these and you can put them in a dubbing loop if you want make it just another good hackle I very seldom use dubbing loops myself look at this and I strip off what I don't need I think it's easier for me to tie with the feather when it's cleaned and uh, that I have the part that I want to tie in and I'm not gonna have 
this much I will have uh, about half of this and I can see there's a few broken ones there uh, but it's not that bad these are a little too heavy so I take these away too and I oops end up with a piece of feather that I'm gonna use create a little triangle I always tie in and I tie this in underneath and uh, since I will have a lot of buckles I can have quite a bit of space here it doesn't matter easy to tie in you don't need to double it because it's uh, divided like this and I think this will have to go on two or three turns and you look how much you want to have one more or will it be too much it's easy to look at it if I think it's enough I can go in with my fingers and take away those two couple of more like that and then I tie it in you can strip it but you don't need to strip it just hold them away from the fly they want to be away from the fly like that and uh, take your scissors go in cut off and what I have now is like a little spay hackle here I'm not going to uh, tie it down because I want it to be wide. I'm just going to divide it a little bit. Just pull the fibers down so I get more fibers on the sides and underneath than on the top. If I tie them down, most of the fibers will be um, tied in and the best way with the hackle is to have a hackle where the fiber stands out from the feather like this. They want to go this way, meaning they will work in the water a lot better than doing false hackles or just tying in spare fibers. Okay, so next hackle. I'm doing one of these whiting uh, hen body feathers and I, I love those. Uh, I uh, really like when you have uh, a feather where there's a bit of um, speckle into them they look alive and the fly will um, get a better appearance I think looking a bit more alive and uh, I uh, treat this the same way but I don't need to uh, strip this uh, one side because I, I want to have more of this cut it off do the triangle and tie it in pull it out and double doubling meaning I get all the fibers one side of the center of the feather and I think two turns here will be absolutely perfect here we go getting a bit more bulky creating a little more volume to the fly here we go looking good looking even I think it looks good have the main wing there already what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna uh, do things a little odd way here I'm gonna put on um, the rest of the wing uh, well, the, <laughs> the jungle cock and the hackle before I put on the rest of the wing but since I want as little as possible uh, in front I will do the jungle cocks before I do the main part of the wing and uh, what do I have here um, we will use a uh, dyed orange dyed jungle cock and of course with the uh, citus I uh, do it the legal way 
and I start with the one on my side and form it over my finger tie it in rather long because I have so much hackling here uh, look at this broad wing and do this about the same or almost the same length as I have my uh, my tubing hold it in and tie it in and I try to cut between every material I tie in this is already almost in a perfect length or sorry uh, perfect shape make sure it's the same length as the other one and tie that in too it looked like this was slipping down a bit I have to be careful so I get these to be just following the wing the way I want them a little high maybe but I think it's good look at them before I uh, cut because when I cut this it's harder to move the jungle cock okay so jungle cocks are there okay maybe too far down here we go uh, now I'm gonna do the last hackle before I do the last part of the wing and the last hackle as on my Patagorba is gonna be black and I use the pheasant rump feather it's also like uh, heron looking like fibers they're much more durable uh, I need to to put on quite a few turns of this feather to get enough fibers so I have to take a little longer and uh, I would think that uh, three turns will be good the thing with with feathers like this is that you can't say you take this many turns because they're all different pull it out can use my plier if I want but I can also do this by hand, just taking this, doubling, holding back, tying in, making all fibers uh, come one side of the center of the feather, making a nice uh, shape. I said this was one of the patterns I really think was beautiful so I better tie a good looking fly then and you see three turns will be good for me and I tie this in close to the last fibers not crossing over them because then I will probably turn them the wrong way around and then I cut off this now looks like it's too much hackles and too little wing but the reason for that is that I'm now tying in the last part of the wing uh, after the hackles dividing this and uh, here I need a quite long hair hopefully this is long enough I think so Uh, and uh, I don't want too many here too much I just want a little bit to be like a little roof over make sure I divide these and uh, look at they are good soft tapered before I tie them in put them in look at the fly Look at the length too short I have to move my fingers back and tie it in again to get the good length here pull them down on the side before I tie them in is it good or is it not good you know what it's not good if it's not good 
I always do this. Redo. What I didn't like was I think it was too much. I don't want this wing to be uh, a black wing. I just want to have the black roof on top. Here we go. Taking uh, less of the black. Moving it in so it's long enough. Tie it in. Look at it. And uh, looking to me a lot better. Here we go. Secure with a couple of turns. Take this and lift it and press it. If I press this close, it's going to be uh, easier to cut close and not to get a lot of stuff um, to be covered with the, uh, by the cone okay good now I only have a little bit left and then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna tie in a little bit of our nasty rusty angel hair and um, I did these this color to be good to blend with Father Gorba and to be good to blend with the with the orange dyed peacock I normally use. Few turns, few uh, strands, sorry, and double back and one or two turns. And I will not put the yellow on. I will put a black peacock on. And it was here somewhere. Here we go. No, I had another one here that was. I think better looking and um, black dyed peacock is something that I actually haven't seen before I started using it myself and I think the black peacock together with the orange is the colors I use mostly and uh, quite big fly meaning I want to have probably five of those on a small one I do three this is six. They are one broken. Can take that away and take that away. And we end up with five good ones. Spread them and look at the length. Make sure they are as long as the longest black. To mix like a little roof on top. And I just put my fingers on and press them down and tie them in. And sometimes they twist. One or two might want to move sideways. I want to have them separate like this. That's why I, I, I um, treated them before I tie them in. And uh, looks good. And when these are tied in the right way then I can pull and do almost any anything with those they can't twist afterwards if they are right from the start okay and the cone I could have tied this fly but I call pussy style where I do all the wing and do all the hackles and put the turbo on the half turbo I'm putting on here is going to make this uh, have a uh, little narrower profile the cone decides um, the profile of the fly and i will use our excess our medium size uh, and uh, i'm bragging about our organizer boxes and actually now you can buy organizers with all the cones in if you're interested put this on and you can see there is very little space here. That's why I had to be careful with how much material I had there. Then I just take a little bit of glue, use support, put a little bit of glue on top. Make sure the glue doesn't dry up before you press the cone on. Take the thread away, press it on a little bit, and then take the fly out of the vise. And make sure to pull this down and the important thing is that there are no thread here then we have done it the right way 
Okay? Holding back the material using again support by my finger to put the scissors on about three millimeters. Black wing, black light there, and melt it down. Careful, just a little bit at a time to make sure I get a good hole for my leader. Beautiful, eh? Wait a little bit and it dries up and the fly is ready. And now I would say, ah, oh, here we have one. Maybe there's more of those angel hairs. I would look at it. But look at this. I think this fly turned out really nice. It's got a very translucent, broad wing with the color mix uh, from some of my favorite flies. And it also got the little spay hackle that will help this fly swim even in very, very slow water. Because of the cone, the hackles and the soft materials will not collapse. Good. It's a good feeling to tie a fly that you're really happy with. And I am happy with this. This is going to be, here we go. This is going to end up in my box and maybe I'll swim it two days from now on the, on the Norwegian rivers we're going. And um, what should I say? It's a, call it the bastard. Instead of saying, oh, this is a variation of this or uh, this uh, variation of that. This is a mix between the Patagorba and the banana fly. Oops, here we go. And uh, it's now called the bastard. Nice fly and uh, I really like the color combinations, as I said. And I like the way to tie with uh, mixed tackles, a bit of ostrich and tapering a nice little wing. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. Talking like hell, like I do all the time. And uh, I hope you will try it. And if you are interested, we have our packs. Let it give us the pack. We have uh, packs with um, both ready flies and uh, material packs where you have enough material to tie at least 10 of these flies. And uh, we are selling thousands of packs. And I think you guys think it's a good combo to have the packs together with this little film and you can um, at least uh, tie with our materials and try my way of tying. And um, hopefully you think it's good and complex fly with a lot of materials but uh, not that tricky as long as you keep it big like this you go down and do the same on a four centimeter it's much more tricky to get a fly that swims in a good way okay talking and talking now i'm going packing and uh, i hope you guys go tying some of the bastard flies so thank you very much for watching this our 40 second film Thank you.